We have recently observed with concern very subjective reporting from the media and certain bodies regarding the financial relationship between the Republic of Namibia and the government of the People's Republic of China. We would like to inform the public that such statements are not supported by facts. If at all, they are merely perceptions propagated to hoodwink the public into believing that Namibia is overexposed to Chinese loans or such loans of facts are assuming unsustainable levels. I will share the facts with you now. In this regard, it is only fair that we reiterate to the public the factual information on public debt and the proportion of Chinese loans in total foreign debt or total debt makeup. In this regard, a brief overview of the concessional loans from the Republic of um, from the People's Republic of China to the government of the Republic of Namibia. I will give you the, the details just now. Before I do that, just an explanation of how our debt, our total debt portfolio looks like. We have got four categories of debt that we um, utilize to fund budget deficits and whatever is needed to, to use debt instruments for. The first and the most important one is the domestic debt market or the domestic markets. And there our debt take up in the domestic market is currently 51.3 billion or 67 percent of the total. The second highest category is foreign bonds, euro bonds and JSE bonds. That stands at 17.6 billion or 23% of total debt. The third category, and that is where the Chinese loans fall in, is bilateral debt, that is government to government loans. That stands at 1.1 billion or 1% of total debt. And then we have got multilateral instruments, that is when we borrow from multilateral development banks like the African Development Bank and so on. That stands at 6.7 billion or 9% of total debt. Total debt stands at 76.6 billion. So if we talk about Chinese debt, it is part of the 1% exposure of total debt that we have. As per the bilateral arrangement, the Dominican government has benefited from the government of the People's Republic of China, whereby government of the Republic of Namibia requests for government uh, for China's support to extend funding to its development projects as set out in our development plans. To date, the government of Namibia benefited from Chinese loans in the form of or not, not Chinese loans, sorry, from Chinese support. There, were, there are three levels of support that China has <coughs> offered to us. It's grants, interest-free loans, and concession loans. We have received grants to the value of 1.3 billion. Interest-free loans, 302 million. And concession loans, 1.6 or 1.7 billion. Okay. Grants again, 1.3 billion, interest-free loans, 302 million, and concessional loans, 1.7 billion. These loans were offered and were provided within mutual understanding between the two governments and contain concessional terms and conditions as opposed to market loans or other borrowing like those provided by the development financial institutions or the bond market. The concession concessionality is achieved either through interest rates below those available in the market, grace periods and lower management and commitment fees as described below. 
Now the interest, the concessional terms of Chinese loans that we took up are the following. We borrowed at an interest rate of 2% and commitment fee on undisbursed balance of the loan of 0.5%. All loans attracted five years grace period before the payment of any principal starts and the repayment period is 15 years. Those are the terms that we negotiated with China. Now, although a Chinese contractor is required in this arrangement, <coughs> it is worth stating that projects that benefited from this funding are mainly large construction of roads and the procurement method employed was the one of the Namibian government. Apart for the machinery and highly specialized skills labor that Namibia does not have locally available, material consumed in this type of process <coughs> are locally sourced. This includes the bitumen that was sourced from Okania, and then fuel, sand and stone in addition to 20% Namibian company participation was secured. As our records show, and as set out in the table above, total loans from the Chinese Export-Import Bank of China amounted to 1.99 billion, or 8% of the foreign debt, but only 2.6% of total debt. And that comprised of 2.2% concessional loans, and 0.4% interest-free loans. That's the two categories where we borrowed from China. The projects that benefited from this borrowing were, that is for the concessional loans, were the National Youth Center, the Umakange Ruakana Road, 60 kilometers, and Gala Utapi Road, 90 kilometers, custom scanners at all border posts, and electronic um, documents recording management system at the office of the Prime Minister and a consignment of transnational locomotives. The debt servicing towards Chinese loan includes capital repayments and interests and in total amounts to 65 million per year. That's for this year. As a portion of total debt servicing obligations, the debt servicing for loans from China is only 1% of the total debt servicing obligation. Now, as I've indicated, the total debt exposure is 2.6% of the total debt portfolio, whereas the total debt servicing obligations is only 1%. And that is obviously indicative of the concessionality of the loans that we have received from China. Otherwise, it would have been in proportion the same. <coughs> we should also objectively and factually address the alleged state of, or statement of, that we are, our economy is captured by China. Now, what does that, what would that entail if that would have been factually based. Now for the size of our economy, government alone operates and accounts for about 57 percent and the private sector mainly wholesale and retail, financial intermediation and the tertiary services sector do not reflect predominance of Chinese ownership. For certain, the portion of loans sourced from China does not exhibit such predominance. The argument is if we say that China has captured our economy, we must check whether the 57 percent that is the public sector, has that been captured by China? There's no ownership of Chinese entities in public entities. Retail and wholesale is the second largest component of our economy. Who is busy and who is the main shareholder in retail and wholesale? Look around in the molds who that is. 
it is not China. So the argument of being captured is nonsense. I hope I could, with these factual figures that I have shared, show that the government is actually pursuing what our foreign policy is asking us to do, and that is to have favorable relationship with all. China being the second largest economy is an important player in the world economy, in the global economy. We would do ourselves a serious disfavor in blaming Chinese investments as being captured, uh, capturing the Namibian economy. It's far from being true. But it must be said that China fortunately invested in Husab Mine. That's the largest single investment in our economy, Husab Mine or Swakop Mine, which is favorable, it's good, it grows our GDP.